Hi, I'm Margaret Martin at Melio Guide. I'm a registered physiotherapist. Melio Guide is all about aging well with exercise with a special focus on osteoporosis. Today, my special guest is Dr. Janet Rubin. She's a distinguished professor of medicine in the Division of Endocrinology and Metabolism at the University of North Carolina. She's also vice chair of research in the Department of Medicine. On top of all these things, she maintains a clinical practice helping people with their osteoporosis. Dr. Rubin has been investigating bone remodeling for decades. Her particular focus has been on how exercise and mechanical forces affect cell cytoskeleton and how that stimulation alters the stem cell lineage, what they become. So Dr. Janet Rubin, has not only accomplished all of these things, but she's also been voted by her peers onto the list of best doctors in America, a recognition that she's held since 2008. In today's discussion with Dr. Rubin, I uh, delve into bone quality and uh, a little bit of talk in regards to the uh, low intensity vibration platform. Your brother, Dr. Rubin, Clinton Rubin, is the founder of Maradine LIV, the low intensity vibration platform. And studies have shown that it can improve bone quality. And we get excited about that because we know exercise can improve bone quality as well. Um, could you explain in just a few minutes what bone quality is? So bone quality is something that so far is hard to measure on live people. And bone quality is really the architecture of the bone. So it's not just how much density you have, right? So the density would be if, if this was very dense and I pushed down on it from the top, the denser it is, the less I can compress it. But none of our bones are just being compressed. They're being twisted, like your hip is twisted. If you throw a ball, all these things are, are twisting. So the quality has to do with how that bone is made. You know, what is the cortical margin that you have? What, how many little trabeculi go off from there? Are there porosities in the, in the cortical part? So um, it's, um, it's material properties, the way, where the, where the materials are and the architecture of the materials all the way from, from the, you know, the huge bone right, like an elephant bone, um, all the way, so, so macro qualities down to micro qualities, what, what do the bone crystals look like? What, you know, what do the trabeculi look like? What, how thick is the cortex? All those make up bone quality. And bone quality, it's just hard to find out what it is. I think you had something on there, like, what do I think about a TBS, a trabecular bone score? You know, it, it's just another thing that you kind of throw into the, the things that you would tell a patient and you'd say, I think you're more at risk for a fracture than that person with the same bone mineral density. But I, I haven't found it. I would like our radiology department to, to buy the software, but I'm not sure it would really substantially change my practice maybe in five years. Okay, and so very lastly, then just to pull us back to the interview I had with your brother, is how many of your clients and, and what type of clients do you recommend a low intensity vibration platform for? So because Clint, who is brilliant, is my brother, it's hard for me to recommend it. Hmm. Um, just because of all those things we just talked about. And it's also, it's not paid for. And people don't like buying their own stuff. But I have people who come to see me because they know that, you know, that I have, you know, we have a paper out in vibrational therapy somewhere in the last few years that gets cited and quoted a lot. If they come to me and they say, is this a good thing? I'm like, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Um, especially if you really can't exercise because you're too frail. You know, there, there are things about vibration. Clint has some great studies um, that 
should be published. I don't know where they are, um, but show that that vibration therapy keeps metastases from spreading in the bone. So I think there's lots of things where people, sometimes it seems to help how people's tendons feel. And so, so I, it's, it's one of those things, again, that's hard to show all the great benefits when you can put somebody on a drug and really just move their bone mineral density, right? So this idea of, of microarchitecture and what mechanical things can do, which is build bone where it needs to be built, that's what mechanical approaches are supposed to do. Vibration can do that. Um, so that being said, in my office, which I semi gave you a tour of uh, when we when we started, I have a maridine plate. It's over there, and I have my little in motion runner over there. And I, you know, I exercise a lot. And when I feel very anxious, I don't get on the maritime. <laughs> I jump on the thing and start running because I'm like a little mouse who likes to run. And, um, you know, one of the things that we've done is we exercise mice, which you didn't ask me about, but it's really fun because mice, those of you who kept mice, your people who have kept mice when they were kids, know if you wake up at night, the mice, mouse is running around the, the little treadmill and mice love to run whether they're old whether they're fat or even when they're sick we have exercised all those mice and they run all night think of a little tiny mice mouse a little tiny mouse about this big in our experiments run 10 kilometers a night which is amazing now you see how they can kind of get up in your house and run up there and you know but mice like they will choose to run all night long because it's fun for them. And, you know, humans are different than mice. But when I get anxious, I want to get on my little thing and run because I just find it relieving. And the Maridine um, plate, which I think is, is great, um, it just doesn't give me that anxiety reliever. <laughs> But sometimes if I'm very quiet, I might just go and stand on it for fun. Okay, well. <laughs> hey, that Brent, actually, I would rather run than stand on your plate. <laughs> but it was actually, and if you did it three hours apart, as you said, you would get even more benefit. Right. From your and running. You know, and, and again, we, we didn't talk at all about my research, but my research is how the cell understands the, the information coming into it. And it can't just understand it being slam, slam, slam. It has to say, oh, this is what's happening. Change how it's existing in space. And then when the next burst of exercise comes in, it amplifies its response. So um, as I, when I found this out in the lab, I told people I used to exercise for, you know, every day I'd exercise for 35 minutes, except for Fridays when I don't exercise. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, I would exercise for an hour because I didn't have to go to work. And I started getting older. I'm like, you know, this is really hard exercising an hour in a row. And then I found out that my cells did much better at the end points if I exercised them and then exercised them three hours later. So for probably the past eight, 10 years, I'm, I still exercise for more than an hour on the weekend because I'm an obsessive. But I exercise in the morning for a half an hour, in the afternoon for a half an hour. And that's something that we can tell our older patients. You do not have to exercise for 20 minutes straight. You can exercise for 10 minutes. I'm happy if you exercise for 10 minutes. But if you can exercise for 10 minutes, then you can exercise again for 10 minutes in the afternoon. Sneaky. Yes. Yeah, so that's really great because I... I know your brother had said that about the vibration platform. I didn't know if that could be directly translated. I've been saying it to people, but hoping then that moving for 10 minutes. Oh, then I think it can. Okay. I mean, we know, okay. we know that say for like high intensity training. So all exercise different for some things for muscle, some, you know, we just don't understand enough about it, but, you know, short bursts of exercise can do, can 
change as many genes as long things. In the end, they kind of change different things. I mean, you're not going to do high intensity training if you're a marathoner, right? So there's all sorts of different types of training. As we talked about earlier, you need, you ladies, you need to do resistance training, which I'm sure Margaret can help you through, and you're walking through the neighborhood, um, but you don't have to do them at the same time. Um, there's a lot of hours in the day that you should be getting up. You should be getting up from your chair and exercising. Why not? When you brush your teeth, yeah. I think, you know, stand on one foot if you can. Build your balance. Um, make sure your glasses work. Make sure you don't have macular edema. Try to hear. You know, all sorts of things. Well... This could be going on for hours, but I know um, I just really want to thank you for oh, sharing. It's been fun. Yeah, you're, you have so much wisdom and I wish we could all, I'm sure everybody listening to this go, I wish I could go see her and ask her my questions. Um, well, if they live in Chapel Hill, they probably could. <laughs> okay, well, you might be <laughs> getting people moving. In North I doubt that, but, um, <laughs> but exercise, Make sure to exercise. And I, I really, I'm thrilled that, that you do this. Um, and I wish, same thing. I wish that my patients could, you know, could click in with you and you could come and say, yes, you can build your core strength because you know what? They can. Yes. Yeah. So again, Janet, thank you very, very much. My great pleasure.